Hello and welcome, or Moyen on Willkommen, how the Luxembourgish put it. My name is Nico Thielen, and together with Luxembourg for Tourism, it is my pleasure to welcome you for this edition of Lucy TV. In case you might have wondered, Lucy TV has borrowed its name from the ancient fortress of Luxembourg City, which was called Lucy Lienburg. Lucy TV is an interactive online format for travel enthusiasts and experts such as yourself to discover Luxembourg as a tourist destination. I said it is live and interactive, which means that you can ask questions right away during this edition in an online form that should pop out right about now. The past months have been uh, rather challenging for all of us, but also for the tourism sector. Maybe now it is a good moment to look into the future, as there is a sense that people are gaining back their taste for traveling. And this is as well what our studies have shown. Me, myself, as a Luxembourger, I am surprised time and again by the large offer of touristic projects that Luxembourg is offering. And a few of those offers we have taken out for you and we will show them to you today. We'll make you discover the Luxembourger scene of art, culture, but also the landscape of Luxembourg and its people. Today we are broadcasting from the southern region. It is a former industrial region and that is still visible today. More precisely, we are in Dudelange and with me is uh, Paul Lesch and we are standing in front of the water tower and uh, the Pom House. Now, firstly, maybe about the Pom House. What was in there back in the day and what can we find there today? Well, this is an ancient uh industrial site. So it was, it belonged to the uh, Luxembourg steel industry uh, and uh, the water tower was built in 1928 and the pump house, the pump house was there to pump the water uh, to uh, the water tower. So uh, of course nowadays there is no uh, water in this water tower anymore. It's a venue for uh, exhibitions. We used to show the famous Edward Steichen um, exhibition, The Bitter Years, for almost 10 years. We had to uh, change it now because it's a very uh, expensive and also old exhibition, so we have to uh, look after it and it has to rest for a certain uh, time. But it's used now for all kinds of exhibitions, photogra photography, but also other media. Uh, and so it's a cultural site. The tower and also the POM house, which has a, a huge, there's a huge uh, a venue for all kinds of uh, events, uh, be it exhibitions, temporary exhibitions, but also um, parties uh, or conferences, uh, plays and so on. And it's something that really gives um, a lot of uh, livelihood, I think, to uh, the whole region here in this house. And it's also quite versatile. It's very versatile. As I said, it's, it's about photography, but not only photography. So we had plays, we had concerts, uh, we had exhibitions on uh, artists, but also on filmmakers and so on. So it's something, it's all linked to what the CNA, the Centre National de l'Audiovisuel, is all about. It's an archive, an audiovisual and photographic archive for Luxembourg. And so the idea is to... Uh, showcase what we have in our archives in these, uh, in these venues, in the water tower and also in the POM house. One of uh, the most interesting in exhibitions of the UNESCO, and it's one of the most um, visited exhibitions in the world, is the Family of Men in uh, Clairvaux. Yes, the Family of Men, it's an exhibition, a photo exhibition organized in 1955 by uh, the American photographer Edward Steichen, who was born in Luxembourg and then left as a kid. And uh, we have this uh, permanent exhibition now in Clairvaux, which is part of the CNA, but it's the northern part of the country, where people can uh, see a, a, an exhibition that has been seen by more than 10 million people, not here in Luxembourg alone, but since it was an exhibition that started in 1955 and toured the world, so it was shown all over the world, and it's definitely the most seen photographic exhibitions ever, and of course, there are still many people who haven't seen it, so it's really something that's worth coming to Luxembourg and uh, visiting Clairvaux, uh, but also, of course, Dudelange here uh, with our other exhibitions we have. Indeed, so one of the most visited photographic uh, exhibitions in the world, and uh, are there any more upcoming projects, maybe? Yes, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we bought an, uh, a collection of a uh, German industrialist who, uh, in fact, uh, collected photos, contemporary photos, uh, in the same 
uh, philosophy Dan Steichen did in his exhibition. And uh, the plan is, now we are restoring these photos, there are several hundreds of them, and the idea is to present them also in Clairvaux, in another building just in front of the, of the castle in Clairvaux, where the family of man is being shown, so that there is a dialogue between the old exhibition and the new photos from the 1970s, 80s, 90s, up to uh, nowadays. Quite impressive. Thank you very much, Paul. You're welcome. For this uh, first uh, intervention of this edition of Lucy TV, and there's quite more to come. We will take you uh, on, a on a trip to the Mulletal region, also uh, called the Luxembourgish Switzerland, or the Little Luxembourgish Switzerland. Why that is the case, we'll see in just a few moments. Furthermore, we will make a trip by bike along the Moselle region, which is also an excellent wine region. And we have a little surprise prepared for you. So uh, be ready, but more uh, for that later. After, we will take a trip to uh, Luxembourg City, the multicultural uh, capital of Luxembourg. Luxembourg, and we'll also tell you more about uh, the art and culture of Luxembourg in general. As a last highlight, we have uh, ASH 2022, which is upcoming, the European capital of culture, which is in ASH the next year. So uh, let's start with our first subject, hiking. Hiking is always like a little getaway from the daily life and maybe the daily stress of life and it's an activity that many Luxembourgish people have rediscovered for themselves. Right now we will take you on one of Luxembourg's top trails, the Mullertal Trail. Let's go. The trail is waiting for you. Your steps, your breath, your gaze. Hear the rustle and smell the scent of the leaves. Narrow pathways, steep steps, deep gorges, rocky passages, little bridges and waterfalls. The Mulletal is full of geological history. Damp stones, faces in the rocks, where the fairies dance, falling drops. Where are the golden lady's treasures hidden? How did the milestones get from the rocks to the streams? Are those the devil's footprints on that rock? Peaceful waters, Take a break at the foot of the castle walls. Dream of the past. And then onwards, step by step, meter by meter. Conquer the trail, become one with it. 112 kilometers. Which ones are yours? We are now inside the POM house and it is time to welcome our other guests. With us is Diane Tobes, a national coordinator of Culture LX, our biking expert and enthusiast Philippe Hergrat from the association Provelo.lu. Next to me is Marianne Origer from the regional tourism office of Mulletal. And later we will be joined by Jessica Maria Rauch of ESH 2022. Marianne, we have just seen the video of Müllertal and I can personally confirm that uh, the view there in reality is just as breathtaking or not to say more breathtaking than uh, in the video we just saw. If one visits, one might just fall in love. So uh, during the past months and the past year, which was a bit special to put it that way, have you noticed an increase in visitors in the Müllertal? Well, hiking has got a long tradition in the country and in Müllertal. It was Dutch tourists that discovered Luxembourg's little Switzerland, Luxembourg's Klein Switzerland. They gave it the name. And after that, more and more hiking paths were created. But you're right, the pandemic did 
its best, let's say, to get people out again, to remember how it is to be in nature, to get this strength from nature, to feel free, to feel good, good physically and good mentally, and to forget about your worries. So certainly the pandemic brought us more hikers, people got out of their homes, they got outside and they profited from it, and for God sure brought people back to nature, which is maybe one of the few positive things that we uh, have taken uh, from, uh, from this situation. So uh, personally, when hiking through Luxembourg, in your eyes, what makes Luxembourg unique as a hiking destination? Well, first of all, in a small country, we have a lot of different hikes, of long distance hikes, small hikes, various systems that are very harmonious. And you have the variety of landscapes on a very small territory. You have the vineyards on the Moselle, where the dream loops. You have the Escapardin, uh, Ace Lake uh, Trail that you have in the north of the country. You have the Gudrun Trails, where there are the castles. And then in the south, here the Minna Trail. So various systems that you can come to very nice places and it's never far to go to be in nature, to be in a wonderful place. That's also a very interesting selling point for Luxembourg because uh, there are various regions that are very close by that you can cover in, uh, in a very short amount of time. When talking about uh, gastronomy or maybe different services that can be used by hikers, what comes to mind? When we talk about gastron gastronomy, let's not forget that we have the world best chef in vegetarian dishes coming here from Luxembourg, from the Chateau of Burklinster. But we also have a big variety of other restaurants, other cuisines, regional dishes, regional products that are very tasty and that you can taste in an old castle, for example, or in a village or at a producer himself. So it's a big variety. Mm -hmm. That's also definitely a trend to uh, eat local and to consume locally that uh, Müllertal is definitely covering. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Marianne, for those uh, insights. And so, uh, as we see here in Luxembourg, you really can enjoy the good life. Having a nice meal, something good to drink, uh, being in nature, relaxing, maybe camping, these are all things that can be wonderfully combined with a biking tour. And this is exactly what we will do with Mike. Mike McQuaid is an American who lives in Luxembourg since 2014 with his wife, who came here for professional reasons. And in the beginning, uh, Mike, he didn't know the first thing about Luxembourg, but uh, like he might even have mistaken it for Liechtenstein. But with time, he really got fond of the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg, the only Grand Duchy in the world. And today he will take us on a cycling tour along the Moselle. <laughs> Oh yeah, and be gated at Cinda Mike. Today, I want to take you on a bike ride through the Moselle region. We're in Mondor, in the southeast corner of Luxembourg. This place is the Park Thermal. It's a 45-acre haven of just idyllic greenery. The park features many attractions, not to mention the renowned spa resort. But Mondor is famous for something else. 2010 is a year that Luxembourg sports fans will never forget because that's the year that Luxembourger Andy Schleck won the Tour de France. Andy Schleck and his brother Frank grew up here in Mondor, which makes this the perfect place to start our bicycle journey. We're in Schengen and the sky is blue and the sun is out. And the reason you're allowed to travel freely throughout Europe is because of an agreement that was signed here. And Schengen has several monuments marking this historic agreement. Let's go have a look. Here in Schengen, we'll hop on the cycle path that follows the Moselle River. Next stop, Hofremisch in the village of Remerschen. This was once a vast gravel pit, but now it's a nature reserve rich in flora and fauna. We'll just leave the bike here for now. So to learn more about Hof Ramisch, stop by here at the Biodiversum. It's a, a conservation center with exhibits detailing everything there is to know about this area. But for now, 
Let's just take a walk, check this place out. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> nice bike. Following the Moselle, we make for Vermeldange and on, riding the PC3. It follows the Moselle River to Wasserbillisch, and then the Sauer River to Reisdorf, and from there, the Ur River to Viande, which is why it's called the PC Cyclable de Trois Rivières, which is cycle path of three rivers. Vermeldange is a charming riverside village with numerous vineyards that produce excellent wines. The town is also crowned with a little gem I'd like to share with you. As you can see, the road tilts upward, and so you're going to have to channel your inner Andy Schleck. I don't think Andy Schleck did this when he went up to call the Tourmalet. Look at that view. Honestly, this is just a fraction of all the things you can discover in the Moselle region. But don't take my word for it. Come see for yourself. While I enjoy some of the best the region has to offer. Addy Chow, Tip Top. Another beautiful region of Luxembourg along the Moselle. And as we saw in the video, Mike sure loves his good glass of Moselle wine. And you can as well. If you've heard about the famous Luxembourgish Cremant, this is your opportunity to win some. You can simply send us an email uh, via the email address with the word Prost. Prost, Prost means uh, cheers in Luxembourg. And as we are live, you can do it right now. And at the end of the edition, we will find out uh, who the winners uh, were. So um, Luxembourg is indeed also a cycling nation. There are many enthusiasts in Luxembourg as well, which is no doubt linked uh, to the many events, but also um, to the victories that have been won by Luxembourgish uh, sportsmen. As Mike has mentioned, for example, the Schleck brothers that have won the Tour de France. Also, uh, tourists come here to cycle and they have rated Luxembourg as a top destination. Over 90% of the people who came here uh, have rated it with very good. And they would also recommend it to other cyclists. So uh, we have also an expert with us here today, Philippe Herkrat from the Association of uh, Pro Velo. Hi. Philippe, hi, <laughs> and welcome again. So um, what would you say makes Luxembourg unique as a cycling destination? I think something that I personally appreciate a lot when it comes to cycling in Luxembourg is not only the beauty, but particularly the, the large variety of landscapes that we have here that one can discover by bike, uh, even on rather short rides. I mean, we have heard it before, Luxembourg isn't a very large country, but despite that, uh, there's really a lot to, uh, to explore by bicycle. Can you name a couple of examples of trails maybe? Um, yeah, we saw it already in the video with Mike uh, that uh, you have like beautiful bike paths that are uh, running along the rivers or going through through the vineyards in the Moselle region. Um, in the region where we are currently in the Red Rock region, uh, you rather have um, industrial um, industrial uh, surroundings. You have the, the former iron mining sites uh, that really shape the landscape. And then when you go to the north, it becomes a bit more hilly from the terrain, but uh, you have very scenic rural uh, environments with forests, fields and meadows. And something that I would maybe like to highlight is that despite sometimes there being a challenging terrain, uh, many of the bike paths in Luxembourg, and that's maybe a bit particular for our country, is that they have been built on former uh, railway tracks. So they usually present rather comfortable gradients and even seniors or people uh, like families with kids can easily use them to, to explore the country. Mm -hmm. How many kilometers of cycling roads do we have here in Luxembourg, approximately? So our national bicycle network 
um, count some 600, a bit more than 600 kilometers, which are mostly separate from, from roads, so really safe infrastructure. Uh, on top of that, we have uh, a bunch of different regional and communal um, bike routes or bike networks that complement the offer that really allow for cyclists to go pretty much anywhere. This is not always on a separate infrastructure, but usually uh, it will be on small roads with very little traffic. Uh, and then on top of that, for, for the mountain bike lovers, we also have like a network that spans some 700 kilometers of trails, uh, which are grouped into uh, f around 40 uh, different routes for, for mountain bikers that they can discover here in Luxembourg. That's 700 kilometers in addition to uh, the cycling roads, is that right? Exactly. All right. So uh, there we can see that there is a lot of variety. Are there also, what are the services that bikers can use? So especially when it comes to having a longer stay on the bicycle here in Luxembourg, one service that's maybe very important to highlight is the Baden bike label. It's a label that has been established here in Luxembourg 10 years ago. It comes from Germany and it certifies um, different establishments, campings, uh, youth hostels and hotels that are particularly bike friendly. So they have to fulfill certain criteria that make it so that they are more welcoming and make the life of bicycle tourists easier. Um, an example could be that they have bicycle, uh, bicycle storage places that are secure so people can sleep uh, without having to worry about their bike when they're on the trip. Uh, another example is, for example, um, a very uh, adapted um, breakfast, with, which is rich in vitamins, rich in carbohydrates, so one can really start the day in the saddle with some strength. Uh, another service that's important to mention, and Marianne already did, is the Move We Carry. It also applies to, to cyclists, so if you want to have a trip without having to drag your luggage with you, you can rely on Move We Carry to uh, bring your luggage from one uh, accommodation to the next and you don't have to worry about it. And then maybe the last thing that I would mention is um, the, the bicycle rental network that we have. Uh, it's called Rent a Bike, so very easy to recognize. And it offers the possibility to rent a bike for a few hours or to a few days to really explore the country without having to necessarily bring a bike of your, of your own to Luxembourg, but you can just rent it here on one station, drive around and then drop it on another station without any hassle. That's very easy. In fact, like two weeks ago, I did it myself at the Moselle region, and uh, I have to admit I rented an electrical bike, which was very good because there were some steep uh, ways. Uh, in fact, as we are live, we have a live question that uh, got in, and it's for you, Philippe. Is it mandatory to wear a helmet everywhere in Luxembourg? No, helmet use is not mandatory. It's, of course, recommended, but um, that's up to each cyclist on their own. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So uh, feel free to uh, uh, give us more questions uh, live and we'll try to answer them uh, as best we can live here uh, on set. So um, with the biking, it is of course nice to discover the different regions, but it can also be very interesting uh, to cycle through uh, the cities. There are also many rental bike uh, stations in the city and there is even a UNESCO uh, cycling tour. And it is also indeed a good way to discover Luxembourg City. We have now arrived in uh, the capital of Luxembourg, a vibrant city, a multicultural city, but also a city full of history. Next to the modern architecture and uh, lots of green spaces in the city, you have the 1,000-year-old fortress that you can find traces of a bit uh, everywhere you go. And there is this fascinating mix that makes the magic of Luxembourg City. And everyone who visits um, Luxembourg City will experience it. See for yourself.
Luxembourg City is pulsating with life. It is a vibrant city that hosts over 170 different nations. And that can also be heard on the streets with many different languages. And another plus is definitely the international cuisines. Luxembourg has also a very vast cultural offer. And for that, I would like to, wel to welcome again uh, Diane Tobes with us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> So, um, Diane, Luxembourg has a, a, cultural, a long cultural history, but it has developed in recent decades. Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, I think that over the past decades and even in the recent years, the Luxembourgish cultural scene and art scene uh, has developed in an extraordinary way um, and it has grown really uh, a lot. Uh, this is certainly due to the fact that Luxembourg has been the uh, capital of the European capital of culture twice in 1995 and in 2007. Another one is coming up uh, next year. Um, so this, this has helped a, a lot and um, the sector is still growing, um, is getting more and more professional and uh, gets also now the international attention. Uh, and um, apart from that, uh, got also the public uh, decision makers also um, um, yeah, support the sector a lot. So this, this helps a lot for mm -hmm. the artists and the professional that work around the artists. What would you say, what makes the Luxembourgish cultural scene unique? First of all, I uh, think that um, due to the, um, to the geographical uh, position of Luxembourg, we um, have the chance to get a lot um, foreigners that come here to, to live here in Luxembourg, over 80, uh, for, 48% uh, of the um, inhabitants here in Luxembourg are foreigners. So uh, we are open to uh, all the borders around us, to Germany, France and Belgium. We got a lot of influences from abroad, lots of artists that live here and stay here, but also that go around the world and come back with those influences. And this builds a really unique scene uh, with lots of influences here in, in Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it is a unique situation. We, we say it time and again also because it is quite small with 48% of foreigners. So um, how is it, uh, what would you say is the best way to really plunge into the cultural scene of Luxembourg? I think, um, well, you have to discover uh, a lot in Luxembourg, but also around the country itself. Um, as you say, Plunge, I think we have in all the seasons a lot of um, events uh, coming up in Luxembourg City, mainly, of course, in the summertime. Uh, there is a lot of uh, events and, and offering. Uh, the offers are really great. Um, to, to really get in touch with the artists and the works. Uh, there are some events that one can stretch out and point out, which are, for example, the uh, Congé Annulé at Rotonde in the summertime, uh, where you really can um, uh, have DJ sets and concerts and have a talk with the artists direct uh, and the musicians, the local musicians. Uh, of course, there is uh, some other um, main events like the Rock um Knödler, free rock concert in the city of Luxembourg, um, or the Ashtalai Festival, which is a festival that stretches from uh, jazz music to classic music and world music in the beautiful town of Ashtanach. Uh, so this is also something one should discover uh, while in, in Luxembourg. Um, other, other main uh, opportunity to, to plunge really into uh, the, the artistic world is also to be here in the, in the time of June, where there is the uh, Talent Lab, for example, uh, which focuses on the creation of the theatre uh, organised by the Municipal uh, Theatre in, in uh, Luxembourg City, just to, to name those uh, few examples. Mm -hmm. So, um, can you name a few highlights that as a cultural fan are really not to miss? Just I think while in Luxembourg City, um, we have the Museum Smile, so uh, really discover a stretch of seven museums where you can walk along, walk through history and art and uh, see how the history of, of Luxembourg has developed and also the art scene has developed. Uh, beginning from the uh, Villa Vauban, which focused on the old masters from the 17th to the 19th century, but also to the Lützebourg City Museum, uh, where we collect uh, 
uh, so to say, for the next generations, um, but also the Casino um, Forum d'Art Contemporain, which has the focus on the contemporary art and the youngest talents uh, that are promoted there, with a new venue to discover also the Casino Display, uh, which is a platform for, for those uh, artists too. And then going over to the um, National Museum of uh, History and Art uh, and the Museum, National Museum of uh, uh, natural, uh, natural Art for Science fans, and then going up to the Kirchberg, of course, with uh, the Musée Drei Ischlen, so where you can learn about the history of the fortress and the Mudem, uh, of course, our, our um, modern museum, uh, museum of modern art, um, which, uh, as such, the building is already a jewel to discover uh, on its own. And those um, museums can be discovered best during the night of the museum, which comes up in October, where you have free access to the museums and where lots of other programs uh, are uh, around those open doors. Uh, another, I would say, landmark not to be missed whilst here in Luxembourg is certainly the Abbey of Neumünster, which is settled in the Grund uh, Quartier, a former abbey, former prison, which offers a lot of um, yeah, events uh, all year round, uh, concert, from concerts, exhibitions uh, to um, con lectures, and which also hosts uh, during the summertime open air festivals. Um, the Sirens Call for for example, organized by the Natalie, which is uh, culture, food, and uh, crafts uh, festival, which is not to be missed. And then, of course, the Philharmonie in, in, uh, at Kirchberg, uh, which is also a main building uh, at the Kirchberg itself, uh, with a programmation that's not to be missed. Uh, just to point out uh, the Rainy Days Festival, for example, where you can really delve into contemporary, into, uh, contemporary music. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the Abenau Münster, former prison, They're quite welcoming though uh, uh, these days. I've been there as well. Thank you very much for those insights. I think you will have to leave us a bit later, so thank you already for coming. Thank you. <laughs> And uh, culture is also a fertile ground for the creation of new ideas and also uh, for the creation of a new offer for visitors to Luxembourg. And this is what is happening in Esch right now. It's a whole region that is undergoing a transformation and it's uh, it's Industrial heritage is visible everywhere, and Chrissy will uh, tell us a little bit more and show us a little bit more about that. success story Von der Stahlindustrie bis Wissensgesellschaft, von Dampfloks bis Urban Art. Station aus der das ist am Anfang ein Freilichtmuseum in der Stahlindustrie, die am Süden von Lützebüros am Anfang des letzten Jahrhunderts ganz groß war. Heute treffen wir den Frederik, den sich um den Minenpark von der Gras bekümmert. Was kann ich dann alles so heute gewinnen? So? Von der Gräser ist ganz bekannt für seine zwei historischen Zisch. Wir als Bundi kann er an den 1300 mit seinen großen Dampflokomotiven. Und hier im Situ haben wir auch ganz flott historische Gebäude, wo wir also Ausstellungen dran haben. Guara ist auch historisch ganz, ganz flott. Die Zeit von Fort de Grasse war am Anfang ein wichtiger Platz für ganz viele Eisenherz aus Galerien herausgeholt. Das ist mein Haus in der Nein, nein, das ist eine Galerie, die aus unserem Obgemeet geht, für die Leute können eben hier durchführen mit dem Miniaspun. Die Bande kriegen von den Benevolen ein, ein schönes Visitgemeet. Sie haben noch viele Maschinen, die noch funktionieren. Da kriegen sie wirklich eine richtige Impression, wie die Demos war, die die Leute an der Galerie geschafft haben. Wir machen eine Tour durch den Fond de Grasse. Mir gefällt besonders die alle Epicerie. Wirklich ein flotten Ausflug an Vergangenheit. Aber hier geht es direkt an die Gegenwart zurück. Ich fuhre mit Zug von Niederkur durch den Minat bis auf den Südballwall. Hier sind direkt an einer anderen Wald. Vom Zug aus sind ich sehr dumm. Der ganze Quartier ist ein ungewöhnlicher Mix aus Aal und Neu. Wir sind heute im 
Fall, weil um heisch oben A, und ich muss schon sagen, die Gebäude sind schon immens impressionant. Es gibt seit dem Alt von der Stolindustrie und irgendwie haben wir auch einen Zusammenhang gemacht, weil meine Großeltern und meine Urgroßeltern an der Stolindustrie heute zu Lützburg geschafft haben. Natürlich haben wir auch das ganz neu, zum Beispiel haben wir die Niluhai und natürlich auch die Zeilenzentren. Und dadurch ist es eine Mischung zwischen allen neu, die immens schön ausgesagt. Und Busverbindungen sind wirklich super heu. Und plus aus den öffentlichen Transport auch ganz Lützebursch gratis. Mehr ist keine Lohmol zu Fuß, Matten und Natur. Um Lollinger Birsch gesehen wir für Warte Minet auch Red Rock oder Land von der Roda Erdhecht. Ich treffe heu der Gregory, mein Mountainbike Guide. So, ich gesehen, du hast mal Willow mal probiert, der Mountainbike. Was kann ich denn heu so ein Mountainbike machen? Den Red Rocks bietet am Anfang eine coole Sohn, die sind immer in den und äh, ich hoffe, dass ich heute wieder mal den impressionieren. Wir haben den Dachbaugebiet schüss hinten drin. Und wir fahren ein bisschen da durch. Und du siehst die rote Bude, so viel, oder das äh, durch einen heißen Eisenerz gehalten, den wir hier haben. Und das ist wirklich etwas unik in Luxemburg. Und ich hoffe, dass ich das heute ein bisschen weisen kann. Okay. Du das mal an, guck mal, ob das passt. Heute treffen Industriegeschichte an ein einzigartiges Pflanzenwald oben Dafür aus dem Minet Center 2020 UNESCO Biosphäregebiet. Ich so mit meinem sympathischen Guide Adi und mache mich zu Fuß Richtung Asch. Als Kontrast zur Natur gesehen den Heu überall Graffiti an Urban Art. Asch für den eigenen coolen Charme. Viele Aalgebäude transformieren sich in Kunst- und Kulturhäuser. Aus Aal geht neu. Da das auch die Philosophie von B New Village mit seinem Upcycling Boutique. Als letzte Station der Pitcher, der Kultcafé von Asch. Nach einem spannenden Tag am Süden brauchen wir noch einen guten Aufschluss. Du willst können wir dafür den Pott am meisten Stammcafé der Pitcher. Der Minat hat so viel zu bieten und du willst geht ein Tag definitiv nicht durch. Dabei kommt noch das Asch an die Region 2022 Kulturhauptstadt aus. Und du willst the place to be. Just as Chrissy mentioned, Asch and the whole region, that means also beyond the borders of Luxembourg, Uh, the region is the European capital of culture next year, 2022. Luxembourg has already had two uh, uh, European uh, capitals of culture, and now it will be the region of Esch. We have our experts here, our representative, Jessica Maria Rauch from Esch 2022. So uh, what does it exactly mean to be a European city of culture? So the title, uh, European Capital of Culture, has been awarded since 1985 by the European Commission. And it's there to highlight European culture and diversity and to put uh, yeah, the spotlight onto the richness of this culture. And that's exactly what's also happening next year when Esch uh, sur Alzette, together with the surrounding Luxembourgish and French communes, as you said, will be uh, European Capital of Culture. And this cross-border region um, is yeah, shaped by the common history, the common um, industrial past that it has. And uh, today we live Europe every day. There's a lot of people crossing the border several times per day. And um, in all the projects that we're going to realize, there will be, um, it will be visible how diverse and socially and also culturally this region is. And um, uh, it's also that many personal stories are linked to this industrial past, so there's a lot of personality um, also due to people from the region who are involved directly in this project to shape the future together, also on a long-term view. As we have seen in the video as well. Uh, so uh, what are other co characteristics mm -hmm. of the region itself? So it's a very multicultural, multilingual region. Um, you have 120 nationalities. We talked already about the big, the great restaurants that we have in Luxembourg, also in the south, due to many different nationalities. We can eat very well, Italian, Portuguese, and so on. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a very lively, a very colorful region. You have a lot to discover. Urban art we saw in the video, we saw the beautiful nature. So there is multiple, multiple things. 
So uh, it's quite soon, uh, 2022. When will it start? Is it in January right away? Mm -hmm. No, the official start is on the 22nd of February and then the opening ceremony is on the 26th of February. But uh, already now there is happening a lot. We are um, starting now in fall. We have started with the Remix Festival and uh, multiple events and workshops and panels that will be um, held in all the region, um, in all the communes throughout fall and, um, and winter. For example, in Dudelange, where we are now, we had a beautiful performance and that's also very, um, it's an example of what we do. We mix different um, cultural genres. So we had a contemporary dance performance in a uh, very beautiful church and um, together with org music. So there's a lot happening also by remixing and creating something different and new. Can you name a highlight for you uh, of this ASH 2022? That's a very, very difficult question because uh, we're talking about more than 160 projects, uh, more than 2,000 events, and um, it's, it's very hard to pick something out, but I would say there's already now a lot to discover. Mm -hmm. so Can you maybe give a few insights if you come uh, to the region of Esch as a tourist? Sure, sure. So we also saw in the video that the nature is very beautiful. So the region holds the UNESCO label Man and the Biosphere, which values this industrial stealing, mining and stealing past and the transformation process that's, that this region is in with the people and also nature-wise, because um, you saw also that there's a lot of um, old industrial sites where nature took back its place and um, created beautiful natural reservoirs with hundreds of butterfly species, um, orchids, and uh, then the very remarkable red stone is really um, influencing or like giving a really nice experience when you walk through, for mm -hmm. example. There are many ways to get around Luxembourg, of course. One uh, that uh, we can mention as well is the free public transport. I think it's uh, unique in the world still. What is the best way to get around in the south? So one way, uh, one way is hiking, for example. There's the Minet Trail that already exists, a trail of 90 kilometers. Of course, you don't have to do the 90 kilometers at once. There's uh, different stages that you can do. And um, that's a very nice way to get around because this trail connects all the communes in the south, the municipalities and um, you can really discover a lot. Um, and one of the projects, so ASH22 is responsible for, uh, together with many partners, to develop the infrastructure of this trail, cultural-wise. So there's cultural projects like media art projects and immersive walks, but also um, there's a nice project that I want to highlight. Uh, it, it's talking about Kabaisasha, which is the Luxembourgish word for like a small house. So there is um, creative guest houses, accommodations where you can stay overnight uh, that are built along this trail in the different communes. And you can sleep at places where you probably not, have not slept before. For example, there is an old school that is transformed in a guest house. But also we have seen the Fond de Grasse, the Minette Park, and an old uh, railway um, trail, like a car, a train car is transformed into a guest house. So I think that's quite special and unique. So there are many different guest houses. Do you have a favorite one of those? Well, I think the one in Fond de Grasse is a very special one because it will also have a whirlpool, as I heard. So that's, um, okay. I think, a nice, uh, um, if I imagine being in the nature, being at this beautiful historical uh, place and then enjoying this night in a, in a small um, guest house, I think that's going to be very charming. Mm -hmm. Is it for hikers or can everybody stay there? Of course, everybody can stay there. Um, also, um, cycling is, is something we talked a lot about. Cycling today already, also in the south, you can cycle. And there is a project that we are developing. It's a Minet Cycle Tour, which is um, a cycle trail or a cycle tour of 200 kilometers. Also here, again, there's different stages that you can do. And um, also for the cyclists, it's a nice opportunity to stay longer and maybe to stay a night or two and to really really enjoy the whole area. Mm -hmm. Maybe for our professionals, do you have a concrete offer to book or uh, tours that are or circuits that are bookable in the region? Yes, so our incoming agency, Zales Lenz, they will prepare different packages for um, their clients, also for professionals who are then offering these packages to clients. Um, and then individuals can already book um, individual tours. So there is uh, Visit Minet, the regional tourist office, and they have a website, and there you can already discover a lot. There is like a torchlight hike uh, in an old, uh, in a nice natural reservoir in Esch called El Agron, or um, when you go to the university district of Esch, Belval, 
that we also saw in the video with the very impressive uh, blast furnaces. Um, there is also the Fond Belval who gives nice tours. And I think um, Belval, like when you think of the scenery that also Chris, who's by the way a colleague of mine also working for Ash, she's um, bringing a lot of volunteers together because the project of Ash 22 is really including everyone. It's a project for everyone and with everyone. And uh, where she was, you will next year also have, for example, concerts, dance performances in the scenery of the, um, of the, um, yeah, the old industrial uh, immense buildings. And I think that's going to be quite impressive. Thank you very much, Jessica. And then fingers crossed uh, for Ash 2022 uh, next year. Thank you. <laughs> As we are live, we got um, one of the other questions, actually, and it's about uh, biking. I think, uh, Philip, you would be the expert for that. So there was uh, a question about uh, the luggage. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, tell us again how that works. Um, so the movie carry system is a system that has been um, elaborated by the, the Ministry of Tourism. Um, and it gives people the possibility, if they have at least one overnight stay here in Luxembourg, um, to get their luggage transported from one place to another. So there's a, a website, movewecarry.lu, uh, where you can find all the details. Currently, as far as I know, the service is free. I'm not sure how that will evolve, but now it's still a bit of a testing phase. And uh, basically, you have to call, you have to reserve someone to pick up your luggage that brings it to the next place. And it's not any more difficult than that. So now is the moment to book to keep the service exactly. alive. Exactly. And, uh, or to keep it going, rather. So you can make a huge tour with your bike without carrying any luggage, which is, of course, very attractive. Another question came in, uh, I believe, about uh, the mountain biking tracks, which we mentioned we have 700 kilometers mm -hmm. of tracks. How does that work? Um, so in, basically, you have a bit everywhere in the country. You can find different mountain bike trails that are, as far as I know, mostly um, signposted by the, by the regional tourist offices. So we've seen some, some pictures in the last film about the, the Red Rock mountain bike trail. Uh, in the Müllertal, there's also a lot of different trails. And I know that also in the north, it's one of the activities that's, that's quite popular for tourists. So th there's a, a large selection of, of different possibilities that exist. You can also find them on the internet, for example, on the geo Portail website where the different bicycle infrastructures that exist are actually displayed uh, or I'm sure if you contact uh, the regional tourist offices they can also give you more information about that. Also on the site on the visitluxembourg.com you can find more information on that and you can also rent bikes of course you can rent mountain bikes and electric mountain bikes which is what I did actually. Um, uh, thank you very much unfortunately we are already at the end of this edition of Lucy TV. I really hope that you enjoyed it. You can find more information on various topics on our landing page and if you have any more questions or if you want to organize a fam trip feel free to contact our colleagues from the trade department on the landing page you can also find the winners of the luxembourgish uh, cremant so cheers to that thank you very much for watching adi a merci and see you soon in luxembourg <laughs>